With so much shark activity, the team decide to push forward. Next, they'll attempt to catch one of these huge sharks to fit the final $6,000 satellite tracking computer. Neil lowers a single steel fishing line with a baited circle hook. It's not long before a tiger shark takes the bait. I think somebody's playing with this one. Oh, yeah, here we go. Tiger shark on! There is a serious risk of being pulled overboard when fighting such a huge fish. Neil uses a body harness to support his back, and Choi stands by to assist with additional weight. Uh, basically, I'm just bracing Neil. What happens is he's actually come from the back of the boat, so he's higher up on the step here, and obviously the, uh, so his uh, center of gravity is a little bit higher, and also the shark's getting close to the boat, so he's getting a little more, uh, a little more squirrely. Under the water, Kirkpatrick is watching the shark as it gets closer to the boat. The line has caught the shark on its tail and rolled him onto his back. The shark is now in tonic immobility, a trance-like state that sharks experience when upside down. Uh, we believe this fish may be tail wrapped. As he was running straight away from the boat, the leader is caught around his tail, so we're bringing him in backwards. Yeah. Choi spots the shark break the surface. As it does, it triggers the shark's senses and suddenly rolls over and powers towards Dylan. OK, so this fish is taking a powerful run off into the distance right now. That's a serious run, man. Yeah, you Something know what? a big guy on there. I didn't check this either. This is the rod that I lent to somebody else. I don't think it's running that direction right now, though. Andy. With the added concern that the equipment isn't in the best condition, Neil starts to regain some ground on the tiger shark. And be known to the team, this tiger shark is the biggest shark they've ever encountered in Bermuda waters. You're going to have to loose the anchor briefly and let it go over my head. Try to cut up a bit. Is it good? Yeah. This is a big tiger shark. You can see what we mean with the tail wrap. He gets it on his tail and then comes in in this position. And you can see the huge claspers. It's a big boy. The first and most important task is to immobilize the shark's power using a strong but soft Good. tail rope. Good job, buddy. Neil and his team work quickly to rotate the shark so they can slide the harness around the animal and secure it to the side of the boat. But with a shark of this size, that's easier said than done. I got to be honest with you, I'm calling this possibly the biggest shark we've ever had. This thing is monstrous. I can tell you the weight when we measure it, but this is huge. With the shark now safe and secure, Neil and Choi can begin the tagging procedure. So we've assessed our shark. We think he's about 900 pounds, one of our largest tiger sharks that we have here in Bermuda. So we're going to fit him with our three battery extended life spot five tag. It's quite big tag. It's often used on the great whites, but it's not too big for this fish. He's a monster. These tags collect migratory data. Over the last eight years, a number of tiger sharks have been tracked all over the Atlantic Ocean. These tracks have revealed Bermuda to be a key habitat showing individuals returning year on year. This is the crucial information the team need to help protect the species in Bermuda. Back on the boat, Neil and Choi have the last sat tag in place. Okay. Um, well, basically, we're putting the satellite tag as high on the fin as possible so that the antenna reaches up. We're bolting through. The tag's on one side. We have a washer and a lock nut. And we have plastic bolts so that it doesn't rust in the animal. Just all thinking about animal safety. And we'll snip them off and make it as streamlined as possible so it affects his swimming at a minimum. Yeah, this is a huge fish. Yeah, I think so. To secure these tags, Neil has drilled small holes through the animal's dorsal fin. This looks distressing, but sharks have very few nerve endings in this part of their body. It is a relatively painless procedure and a very small price for this one shark to pay for the benefit of its entire species. I just think it's tragic how many sharks are being killed needlessly for their fins, for game fish, for sport, just for putting their teeth on a wall. And we don't understand enough about the migratory patterns of these fish. And this study is going to allow us to learn so much more about how far these fish travel and their fact that they are truly international migrants. So you can see the tag nicely right at the dorsal fin, right at the top. So when he comes to the surface, that antenna is going to come out. This point of the shark tag will dry, and that will tell it to transmit. 
I'm going to trim away the surplus plastic, being careful not to throw it in the ocean where it would add to the plastic pollution that we're already dealing with. The shark has been in Neil and Choi's care for just over 10 minutes, well under the 20-minute release target. Now the tag is in place, Choi is able to move in and collect the information required to complete the data package. Excellent. Cool, 10 foot one. All right, so it was 10 foot one overall, which puts it in about the 750 pound range in terms of sharks. And to the end of the tail, it was about 12 foot four. 10 foot sharks are usually in the area of about 15 years old. So this guy's been around for a while. Judging by the size of his claspers, I'm sure he's reproducing. The team are now preparing for the shark's release. Neil's veterinary skills are key to this final step. The shark is tired and will need Neil's assistance to swim free. Over the course of this project, Neil and the team have successfully released all their sharks but as this is the last one, the pressure is on to get it right. So, I'm just gonna check his nictitating membrane to make sure he's vigorous, and I'm gonna look at how he's breathing. The nictitating membrane test is a simple reflex examination. The shark's protective eye cover closes upon Neil's gentle touch. This is a good indication of how alert the shark is and enables Neil to predict how the shark will behave once the straps are released. Nictitating membrane is good, came straight over his eye. Neil then checks to see if the shark has flow over its gills. Again, this indicates how alert the shark will be when it's set free. And he's gulping water, so he looks good. I'm happy. These fish are so vital to the marine ecosystem. I'm delighted that we've been able to capture this guy, have him in good shape, and we're going to let him go. I'm going to wish him well on his journey. And hopefully, we're going to change the impression that the only good shark is a dead shark. Neil carefully uses large bolt cutters to remove the hook. There is inevitably a small amount of blood, but nothing that won't heal quickly. The hook is clear. All right. Finally, they release the sling. Neil takes hold of the shark okay. and begins to swim this massive predator away from the boat and back down into the ocean. Since the filming of this project, the Bermuda Department of Fisheries has received a comprehensive map of over 100 tiger shark migrations. As a result, the Department of Fisheries is developing its first comprehensive tiger shark conservation strategy, a policy that will hopefully protect all of Bermuda's sharks throughout the island's 200-mile exclusive economic zone. This shark, named Andy, is again free to roam the open ocean. Uh, that fish was a bit slow to start. I gave him a push for about 20 meters, and then I could feel him start to kick. And then he started to kick away, and I actually went down with him. And he decided, no, he wanted to come back up. He came back up and swam away just at the surface. Some tiger sharks like to cruise the surface. This one did. Woo.